morning, guys. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for joining me again in my gardening room, and I wanna show you something really, really interesting. So this summer I grew something called a Kiwano melon. First time for me, I'm not sure if you've seen one of these before, but I'm gonna try to pick it up and show it to you. It's pretty dangerous. Ah, look at this thing. This thing has been very a very interesting experience growing it. As you can see, it has really sharp spikes. Can you see these spikes? Holy smokes. So this plant, this Kiwano melon plant, has been growing in my greenhouse. And it has been the bane of my existence. It's gonna be the last time I grow it, but I thought, you know, I know it's a kind of a tropical plant and it has a really long growing season, so I better grow it in the greenhouse, not knowing what to expect. Planted a couple plants of this, couple seedlings of this Kiwano melon plant in my greenhouse and this thing started to grow. And at first I thought it was fine, you know, it took a little while for it to get started, but once it started growing, it was like out of control fast. And what I noticed about this crazy Kiwano melon is that it uh, has all these fine hair-like thorns all over it, like the leaves, the stems, all sides of the leaves. You can't approach this plant without getting it into your skin. And it, it literally, like they just brush right off and fall into your skin like tiny little hairs. And they're really, really painful. So I had this growing in my greenhouse and next thing you know, this thing's taking over. It's going over all the cucumbers, the tomatoes, and no matter where I put my hand, no matter how careful I am, even, even if I think I'm avoiding it, it's still like intertwined with things and it's gotten all over me. So I've decided I'm never gonna grow it again, but I was really hoping that I would have at least one fruit from this plant. And I ended up getting one, one fruit. Like I had several little babies and then the babies would shrivel up, but then I had one fruit, this guy. This guy uh, actually grew and I watched him and I let this plant go and I was really cautious and it started like spreading across the greenhouse. It went on my potting table, went across, went up in the seal, in the, in the root, in the rafters, went everywhere. But I let it go because I wanted to try one because I think I've seen this before in the grocery stores, but it's so rare. But, so I thought, you know what? If this doesn't grow, I have to get it. I just need to taste it. I need to see what this thing is all about because you know, I'm, I've given up a lot of my greenhouse for it. Anyway, so it was doing really well. It was green for a really long time, like this kind of green. And uh, I just kept hoping and hoping. Anyways, it got cold outside, it got frosty outside, and I still held out hope for this, this monster right here. Now, this fruit is covered in spikes. Like, these are needles. And so you have to be really careful how you hold it. It's, it's different than like a caught cactus pear. These are actual thorns and they're extremely sharp. And thankfully there's areas that I could hold it in between, but I, you have to be so careful. So when I harvested it, luckily everything's dead in my greenhouse now. I was able just to rip it off with a napkin and I use this napkin to grasp hold of it. Problem is, is that last week we had a really hard frost and my little heater that was inside the greenhouse could not keep up with uh, the cold. So unfortunately this little guy did get some frost damage, as you can see here. So there's patches here that are normal. This looks like it's normal right here. Um, there's different patches, like there's a good patch right there, but then a lot of this is, fr is freezer uh, is frozen. So I don't know what it's like on the inside, but I'm determined to taste it because after all that effort and all the, the struggle that I had with this plant, I'll never be planting it again, I tell you that much, especially not if growing in a zone 5A here in Ontario. So uh, I need to taste this see what happens on the inside. And uh, I wanna experience that with all of you. So I'm gonna cut it open and I'm gonna tip the camera so I show you what it looks like. And apparently what I understand when this is ripe, so this is cucumber family. If you harvest it when it's green, it tastes like kind of like a cucumber. If you harvest it when it's ripe, it and ripe means orange, um, it tastes like a, a lemony banana or something like that. So I wanna experience that, I wanna see what it's all about. And apparently you eat it with a spoon once you cut this open, so I'm gonna cut it down, um, down the middle, open it up, I'll show you the two halves, and I'm gonna scoop it out with a spoon to taste it and see what it tastes like. So here we go, ready? I'm gonna tip the camera, and hopefully, um, it's kind of bright when I do that, but anyway, bear with me if you can see this. So here's my little plate. I have it on right here, okay? Take my knife. Okay, I'm so nervous. I don't know what to expect on the inside because of the, the frost damage to it. I uh, don't know what it's gonna be, but look, it's already, juice is coming out. So I'm gonna turn it this way. I'm trying to be really careful because I'm quite nervous about these spikes. These spikes are uncomfortable to say the least. So here we go. Well, it feels really soft inside, but this could be because of the fact that it's had some frost damage, but it was starting to go, ouch, 
go um, turn it orange. See, I've already stabbed myself. Okay, it's really soft on the inside and I probably grabbed the wrong knife thinking this would be fine. Are you ready? Oh my goodness, people. Oh my goodness. Take a look at this. Isn't that something? Now I know it's supposed to be soft on the inside because you are supposed to eat it with a spoon. It is definitely soft and I'm wondering if it's because of the frost damage that it had or if it, this is just normal and it's not affected on the inside. But I can see here, this here is not and it's you can see it's soft. Anyway, I'm gonna tip the camera up and we're gonna try it together, okay? Are you excited? Because I'm so excited. I love to try stuff with you guys. It's a lot of fun. So here we go, ready? Okay, so let me just tip it back down so you can see. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Okay, little spoon. Ah, wish me luck, ready? Okay, so um, I think I need another try, but I'm gonna tell you what I'm tasting. So the seeds of this Kiwano melon are surrounded in like a jelly sack and they don't taste super sweet. And I have to say, now that I've swallowed it, there is an aftertaste of banana. So weird. Okay, I'm gonna try another spoon, ready? And the seeds are a little bit hard, so you kind of have to chew on them like a pomegranate seed would be, you know, except it's not crunchy on the inside. Here we go again. So, it's like a juicy, watery, jelly sack filled sack with a seed on the inside and the jelly sack is where the flavor is and it's kind of like a lemony mild banana weirdest thing right so i'm gonna try again here we go here we go very juicy i mean it's a cucumber plant right it's a cucumber family here we go again look at that it's beautiful look at the colors the colors are like this when you take it on the spoon, it looks like a like really bright green, almost chartreuse, like electric colored, very pretty. The seeds I'm finding annoying, uh, not really. They're like a hard cucumber seed, but there was a crunchy one there, like a pomegranate seed. Um, so that's the only thing that's bothering me. But the jelly sat, like the jelly part is quite, it's nice. It's like a mild lemony banana. It's weird, it's so weird. Anyway, I thought I'd give you a, you know, let you know about this plant because it, it ha I have been mentioning it through the summer and I wanted you all to know what, what was up with it. I'm glad that the frost didn't actually kill the fruit and make it nasty because I was really worried that uh, I didn't know what to expect after seeing how it was. Because you know, like the tomatoes in the greenhouse that were left over, they're really mushy and you're not gonna eat that. But this is actually okay. And that's probably because the skin is so thick. The skin here is so thick that, you know, like it's uh, like, a, like a pumpkin would be in the garden. If it gets affected by frost, it doesn't turn into mush. So this skin here is has not been affected at all. It's quite thick. like. Look how many millimeters thick that is. And um, so as a result, the insides are okay. So I guess it's a good thing that I waited and didn't harvest it because I did want to taste what a Kiwana melon actually tasted like. And I could see that. I could see how it has a tinge of banana-ish flavor, uh, but a really mild lemon, like not, um, you know, like it's not like a lemon. It's, it's not like a citrus. It's more like a really mild lemon with a, a hint of banana. So anyway, very interesting. Um, Yeah, it's weird. So if you do see one in the grocery store, definitely give it a try. You know, it's fun to try new food. You never know what's out there. Something different is always nice. So anyway, I hope that was fun for you guys. It was fun for me. I'm really glad that I shared it all with you. Hope you're all having a great day. And uh, if you like this video, please give me a like and let me know. And if there's anything else you'd like me to taste, I would be happy to do so. So anyways, I uh, hope you all have a great evening. Uh, have a great weekend. Happy Friday and happy gardening. Talk to y'all soon. Bye.